Wide Web. We're hanging with the authors at Indie Book Fest 2015 in Orlando, Florida. And we've got uh, an author and an audiobook voice narrator, narrator storyteller. storyteller. Yeah. Uh, I, I, awesome. That's, <laughs> That's a great job. It <laughs> is. That is fantastic. And and uh, I, I, we kind of were briefly introduced Sharon yeah. and we, yeah. your last name, Sharon? Is? Hamilton. 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 Sharon Hamilton yes. and J.D. Hart. J.D. Hart. J. D. Hart. So, okay, yes. good deal. Uh, JD does these, all my just, books. All hang, my hang with just so you know, these now are working. We actually have a line. I like it. <laughs> um, and it's, so they're working a little fast, so we'll do interviews on screen. <laughs> okay. But, um, okay, so uh, let's start with Indie Book Fest. Um, mm -hmm. Are you guys having a good time? Yeah. Have you been here both days or today, today your first day? Um, I've been here both days. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, JD's here for the signing and to schmooze and help us sell audiobooks. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, you're up on ACX probably. Yes. 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 In fact, that's how Sharon and I met. Yes. Uh, we met. Through ACX. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. I asked him to interview and he, I listened to his clip and he was my hero. <laughs> and I listened to Tammy or so and his voice stood out, of, you know, heads and tails above all the rest of them. And when he accepted my contract, I was so excited. Uh, and uh, anyway, he's done all 16 of my uh, books, that's all fantastic. my audio books. That so, is awesome. And we now are best friends. Kind of a long term, that's great. We're, and we're, they get a best best friend in the bargain. That's, yes, that's that a, was what we that didn't even expect. That's amazing. Yeah. So that we, really really, is. we live on two different you know, sides of the country, but we get now, to work you? together. Yeah. Uh, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. And I'm in California. Wow. Northern California. Northern California. Yeah. yeah. Are you Wine here? Country. Why? Yes. Are you here on vacation or are you just here for IBF? <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm just here for IBF. <laughs> look at D. This is a great community. When the California, which by the way means that my brother can actually visit me. <laughs> the plane does go this way. Is that yes. a hint? <laughs> I'm just saying, letting, letting, putting it out there. Shame on you for not your brother. So, uh, what, uh, what have you bought? You've got how many books now? I have 16. 16. Actually, I have 20 in different collections and anthologies and stuff. Okay, 16. well, I'm very yeah. lazy. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, really, that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. And uh, what, are you brought all 20 with you? Or are you uh, going to series um, or something? Right most now? of them. Um, uh, what I'm mostly known for is my Navy SEAL Brotherhood series. So I do, uh, they're all uh, hunky guys from SEAL Team 3 and fictional SEAL Team 3 from San Diego. And so uh, these are all different guys on the same on the same team, and they all each get their happily ever after. Oh, wow. I also do some paranormals, but you know, 80% of my sales is the military and the system. That you know what? That's awesome. Right? Yeah, exactly. I love that. I love, I love, I love that. I, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm an old army guy. So oh, awesome. I, I you know and. Uh, uh, the only thing that would be better than being an army infantryman would be being able to be a SEAL. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, if I had to go in the Navy. Yeah. And that would have made my dad really happy. But, <laughs> so, anyway, I, I, uh, but yeah. yeah. So, um, in picking a narrator, I needed a manly man, a husky voice, a nice, a wonderful voice that the ladies would love. And so that's how come he's the perfect for me. Okay, great. Well, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about that. So, we're at our four minute mark. And uh, we'll be right back. The Submit to Darkness series by indie author A.J. Spencer is now complete. This dark and twisted erotic thriller spans three books and follows FBI profiler Natasha Stolt as she hunts the serial killer known as Grimm. Will you become as obsessed with her prey as she does? In 1953, private investigator Will Lucky Marks was working as the in-house private eye for Arcane Pacific Pictures when famed director Alistair Walters was brutally stabbed to death on the scene of his last blockbuster. Lucky must sort through stereotypes and challenge common perceptions as well as his own prejudices in order to sort through gossip, innuendo, and intrigue to find the killer before time runs out. This murder mystery will pit Lucky against some of the most deceitful creatures on earth movie stars. Get Lot 28 today. And the World Wide Web, we are hanging with the authors at IBF 2015 in Orlando, Florida, and uh, we were just talking uh, to Sharon and JD uh, about how they met and how they work together. Uh, and JD and I asked, um, 
uh, you know, what you look for in an author or what you look for in a project that you're going to do as an audio book. And, and you kind of talk a little bit about that process. Um, yeah, it's, it's very important because you don't always get the opportunity to know the author. Okay, personally, I, I've narrated a, a lot of books that uh, went through an agent or a production company. And I didn't get to know the authors. So I really didn't know the, the heart and the soul of their writing. So there's a lot left to chance when you narrate that way okay, and, and guesswork. So I, what I wanted more than anything was to meet someone like Sharon who I, I can have a personal relationship with, get to know her, her heart, the way she thinks, the way she writes, uh, a clear understanding of that, and, and to have a, a line of communication that, that wouldn't hinder us from discussing anything. Um, because it's my job as, a, as an actor and storyteller to breathe life into the story, to, to, to make it real, bring those characters to life. And I even feel as the storyteller, I'm a character in the book. The third person character that's looking in, and I'm looking in at some very personal stuff in her life, you know, and I want to be comfortable with that, and I want to know uh, her life experiences that, that help bring her to, to this particular story and why she wrote this story, and um, it, that's that's very uh, helpful to an actor to be, be close, like, like an actor and a director, the closer they are. The better the movies I look like, yeah, absolutely. And she basically hands me uh, her novel, which I consider um, a screenplay for a feature film. And I, we break it down that way, break it down character by character, and, and we get the cadence right, the tone, the feel. I know those characters by heart as we as we start each project, and it's, it's just fascinating and, and wonderful for an actor. It really, it really is really quick. Um, and I, I actually have to say yeah, you know, that I write for his voice. Oh, that's and wonderful. So I hear him talking when I'm writing, writing you after 16 books. And that's great. He's, he's in my head forever. Uh, now, you, 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 <laughs> don't ever You've been acting and doing voiceover for a long time. And you said you said for books to agencies. And yeah. Like that. yeah. Um, the, the, we talked to a lot of authors uh, this weekend about the phenomenon that is the indie book and the publishing industry. Uh, the opportunity that ACX has provided, and the Amazon provides, the H pages, the Jeff Digital, so many companies that are doing this now, uh, through uh, print on demand, and of course, creating your audio books and things like that. Um, in that turnover, since you've been doing this for a very long time, uh, the opportunity to meet an author like Sharon has been obviously a different process mm -hmm. than ever before. Um, it's been a good process. Is it going to be really better or, or better or not yeah, the same? Yeah, or, it's, it's, it's much better. And, and through social media, you know, we have the opportunity to at least virtually get to know someone mm -hmm. at first. And then you decide if there's a connection there, then you, you can actually start talking on the phone or on right. text, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it's it's a wonderful process. And, you know, I didn't start out to, to be a narrator, okay? I, uh, I did. I started in radio when I was 18 years old, and also voiceover commercials. But my career went in a much different direction. I was a recording artist at Nashville for eight years. Uh, got a contract to be an on-camera spokesperson for Chevrolet for five years, and in the process of that, it's like they wanted me to do voiceovers as well as appear on camera. So I started getting the equipment for that, and you know. And one morning I woke up and I thought, you know, I really have the tools and the skill set to be a narrator. That's mm -hmm. what I want to start doing. And uh, so just put that out in the universe, and then it starts coming back to you. And after about four years of narrating various authors, Sharon and I were, were drawn into this. That's it. That's it. Like, okay, that's what I've been looking for. And, you know, it's different. When we talk about narration, we actually refer to the storyteller because he performs my book. I actually no, like the way you did that. I love that you don't hear it. No, the narrator is his book. Exactly. And, and you know, your storyteller, because you're, you're looking for people to write into the story. Right. Well, it makes it so much more interesting for the listener. If, if I can't bring more to the, to the story than you would hear in your own head when you're reading the book, then I haven't done my job. Well, that, actually, that brings me to an interesting question. This is a new, uh, a new technology. I'm learning about it. I, I just did I my first book up on this uh, website. 
And uh, it's, it's, it's a new sort of growing phenomenon called book track. Nobody heard of this yet? Um, book track actually allows you to put a soundtrack over your book. Oh, okay. The entire thing. It paces the reading pace. Let's say you saw the 85 words a minute, say, or whatever, okay? And then it, once it paces it, you choose from a library of, of uh, public domain sound effects, mm -hmm. and songs, and music, and whatever. Um, and uh, I, was, I was going through ACX, uh, because I've done mine on audio book now. And very much like, like you said, when you first started, you're kind of you're picking a stranger, and you're hoping for the best. And it's been okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not unhappy at all. Um, um, but one of the things that I looked at doing was saying I did this book track. And to me, as I was reading, it was an amazing thing. It, it brought me to life. And then I thought, you know what, I'd really like to do is another, a second edition of my audio book, where I combine my book track with my storytelling. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm wondering, you know, is that something you think is sort of an evolving thing? An audio book should become a major part of the literary industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm clear now. My book track is going to add music and sound effects? Yeah, well, it's or, right, at present, the author does that. The author does we that. go in and we say, oh, I want the music in the background and yeah. sound effects. If there, if there are any, it's opening door, playing key, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you can put them in just for highlights. Maybe maybe it's a, maybe it's a, the end of, of a chapter and somebody mm -hmm. slams the door. So you just mm -hmm. throw that in there to, to finish mm -hmm. the chapter. Um, but what I'd like to see, kind of to take it another step further, is to look at an audio book in you know, mm -hmm. the book. I'd love to see her be able to, to bring that together to make my story a little more uh, three dimensional. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, and it's, it's again, it's that midpoint. Audiobooks have become a major industry uh, staple now. Um, and the book track phenomenon, I read about it about a year ago in a magazine, and then I looked them up online. And I did, my, my books are little short novellas, so they're 200 pages. It's really easy for me to get through and do that. And I did one, and uh, that would work best for a shorter, shorter thing, yeah. yeah. yeah because my, I think it's about a three-hour, three-hour read with uh, the narrator, um, and it's probably that's how, how I pace the book. So it's about three hours, about twenty hours to actually load up all the sounds. <laughs> but, uh, but I thought, gee, that's a, it's a really interesting thing, and, and uh, you know, uh, major industries have difficulty with change. So the publishing industry has a difficult time with change job and doing that. Um, ACX. Has been doing audio books before we were doing it on our own. They were right. doing it as a company, right. um, and so change is difficult. Yeah. Uh, I know that. But I think, oh, is that is that on the horizon? Are we talking yeah, I think it could be. I mean, yeah, anything that there, there's always going to be um, a selection of people who want narration, no sound effects, no music, it, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Just just a good a good music or a good telling telling of tell the story, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know what you're talking about kind of reminds me back in the days of radio theater, where mm -hmm. you, know, you had the actors, mm -hmm. um, and they would bring their own sound effects yeah. and mm -hmm. you know yeah. create the character voices and and, and, do, and so it, it, it can be more entertaining that way. Uh, but then I've, I've had mm -hmm. listeners tell me, well, I don't want to be uh, driving down the road and I'm listening to a nice <laughs> calm voice, and all of a sudden, boom, mm -hmm. you get that sound effect yeah. out there and. Yeah. So it, it's it's a balance. It's a balance, right? Mm -hmm. It's a balance, but it's mm -hmm. but I always believe in evolving and growth. And I think what's great is to see the the, the evolution mm -hmm. of, of technology. Yeah, it takes it, as you said. Yeah. That's what reminded me of immediately. It reminded me of old radio show. I thought, isn't that amazing? We have PCs and we have laptops. And we have cell phones that take pictures, and mm -hmm. we have all these things. And yet, technology brings us to where we were. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now it's an audio well, it's book like project can become a sound that it could be a it's radio a show. True. But it's, but it's not but the same thing, it, but it's a it's, recycle. It's a recycle, but yeah. the like modern is, spin it is, on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's much more cost effective now. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Computers and yes. yeah. and the yeah. ability to, yeah. to license beautiful clips of music mm -hmm. for a little bit of money. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to pay for a band and a studio yeah. to create all this music and pay all these things. It's cost effective and um, you know, the old days of going into a, a huge studio with an engineer and a producer and an author and a director. And, you know, now it's like you said, it's your, it's your laptop, microphone, and, and you're right there. You're doing it all. Yeah. Uh, you're wearing all those hats and producing yourself, which I love. I, that's yeah. challenging and wonderful. I, that's one of the things yeah. I've enjoyed about indie publishing is mm -hmm. the fact that I, 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 I love the story mm -hmm. um, and then I have it edited and then I, I do my. Only editing them, yeah, and, that, and, yeah. Then, and 
then I publish it and I've got the I'm responsible for everything, right. getting the cover design to be edited to get it it's online. The good and the bad. It is. It's <laughs> harder to sell, but I get to learn to do things that I never know how to do. Uh, I, I I have a background in, in conventional marketing, mm -hmm. but it's with 35 million authors, mm -hmm. you know, peddling their wares on uh, mm -hmm. Amazon. Yeah. A conventional marketing plan would cost me about $35 million. Yeah. To eliminate yeah. the competition. Exactly. Uh, I don't exactly. have that right away. I've tried you to get don't? work harder. It's coming. I keep okay. telling them, work harder, right. more yes. hours will do the trick. And that's why uh, we come to these things. That's right. To learn how to, how to do, do all those things, those things and, and so, to share the knowledge. So and, uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, you guys are great. And it, you know what? It's, it's amazing not just to see uh, independent workers mm -hmm. in the publishing industry right now, new authors and mm -hmm. storytellers, um, but to see the friendship that's, that's formed. It's, that's, uh, that's it's absolutely thing. one and of the best things that I've ever done. You know, my readers are, most of my readers are also his fans. That's great. <laughs> so it's like we cross-pollinated our fans, and um, they love the experience of holding the book or reading it on Kindle and then hearing it. That's great. Those that don't like audiobooks, they, they never will, mm -hmm. you know, because they're fast readers, they don't want to sit through eight yeah. hours or so. You'll never sell those people. But the ones that really want to savor the book and the story and hear it over and over again. When I treat my audiobook or my book yeah. that, um, I, I've attempted <laughs> to coin the phrase, it's immersion reading. It is. Yeah, it's immerse right. yourself in the story. And when when you have a good storyteller reading to you, yes. uh, I when I was about sixth grade, my uh, my English teacher uh, was introducing us to all of the literature that we learned mm -hmm. around sixth or seventh grade, mm -hmm. and um, and of course we were lazy readers, mm -hmm. and and what it, she would do it in class, and mm -hmm. she read it out loud, it was amazing to us. Yes. And, uh, and I can't watch I can't watch Gregory Peck read *The Mockingbird* without hearing Mr. Blaine's hearing words in my head yeah. because it, it immersed me in the story and I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. um, everything from the Wagner and Megley or Animal Farm, um, and I remember the work in my mm -hmm. head. And so it's an amazing thing when you have that partnership that you two have, mm -hmm. putting mm -hmm. that out in good stories. Mm -hmm. You need to be a Navy SEAL. It's awesome. uh, I know, it's, it's the best thing you can do. And it gives us a witch. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.